So, in this episode of Solar Life, I'm going to discuss solar panels in the wintertime, why they work better in the cold, and how the snow can actually help increase power production. I'm also going to talk about how I clear the snow off the panels and other issues like wintertime repairs. A clean panel is a productive panel. In an off-grid solar system, it's important to keep panels clear of snow and ice because they reduce the light that reaches the panels, which lowers production. I have to clean the panels on the pole mount whenever the snow is sticky or wet. Usually when it's a cold, dry snow, it doesn't accumulate or stick to the panels. We get about 15 big storms a year on average, and maybe about a fifth of those would require the panels to be cleared of snow. Sunlight is unpredictable in the winter in the Maritimes, so you need to store as much energy as possible by charging the batteries whenever you can. I always clean my panels off after a storm before the sunrise so that they can melt clean and I get as much power from the sun as possible. I use a foam scraper and I attach it to a roof rake. I can use the extension to reach the highest solar panels. Another reason it's important to clear off your panels is that mine are wired together in strings of three panels. And that means that what happens to one panel affects the whole string. This means that if one panel in the string is covered with snow, they all behave like they're covered, even if the other panels are clear. Solar panels actually work better in the cold. The photovoltaic panels lose efficiency as they get hotter. The panels work their best in the winter when they can stay cool because of the lower ambient temperatures to cool them off. This doesn't mean that solar panels don't get hot in the winter because they do. Solar panels in full sun get warm enough to feel the heat with your bare hands even in the coldest days of winter. In the summer, they can get very hot, and this is when they work their slowest. The heat increases the resistance to the flow of electricity. When I was designing the solar system for the house, I chose to hang the panels on the walls rather than mount them on the roof or the ground. I wanted to keep the panels on the house essentially so that they didn't need to be cleared when it snowed. I chose to do this because of the low angle of the winter sun and the reflective nature of snow that would help to boost solar production. The reflective effect of snow is called the albedo effect, and it is studied in the world of solar theory and design. But how much does the albedo effect actually increase the power that's created from the solar panels? It turns out that the answer is both complicated and variable depending on the location, the terrain, the shadows, and many other considerations. I did learn that fresh snow has an albedo coefficient of 0.9, which means that about 90% of the incident light is reflected back off of the fresh snow. As the snow gets wetter and older, this coefficient lowers to about 40% as the light is absorbed in the snow rather than being reflected. So with this in mind, we can make a few assumptions and get closer to an estimate. Much of the light that hits the snow, bounces back in a diffuse way, more like it's hitting a sheet rather than a mirror. Therefore, less than the total of 90% of the light is reflected off of the snow will actually hit the panels. This is lowered by changes in the landscape, objects that cause shadows, like the nearby trees that are next to my house. I estimate based on these factors that about 30 to 40% of the light hitting the panels on a bright sunny day in the snowy winter is actually coming from the albedo effect, the reflected light off the snow. The days of peak solar production for intensity that I have on record are essentially March and April when the intensity of the sun and its angle to the earth makes the albedo effect its strongest for the year. As the spring continues, the albedo effect diminishes as the snow melts until the low in the summer where it's still present, but it is much, much lower. So as you can see, the albedo effect is an important consideration. All right, I try to do all of my maintenance to the solar power system in the summer when it's warm and my hands want to work. However, occasionally things do go wrong and components need maintenance in the winter when it's cold and frustrating. This happens 
not too often, but last winter the linear actuator malfunctioned and I could not tip the pole mount array forward or backwards as I was trying to prepare the panels for a snowstorm. This whole process was exacerbated by essentially my weather worries. I was sure that the actuator was broken and that I was out 400 bucks, but I wanted to be absolutely sure before I ordered a new one or tried to get parts to repair it. I went about the process of unbolting it from the array, manually tipping the array forward into the vertical position. And then once I got the actuator removed, I was able to bring it into the house, thaw it out, and as it warmed, water started to run out of it. It had actually gotten waterlogged from a bunch of rain and melted snow that hadn't drained out of the actuator and then froze the gears up. After a couple of days of drying out and some testing, I wrapped up the problem area with some rubber and we reinstalled it. And so far I haven't had any problems since. So that's it for this episode of Solar Life. Thanks for watching. Please leave any comments below and subscribe for more videos.